Hi, my name is uh, Nicolas Brando. I'm a researcher at the University of Liverpool, working on childhood and children's rights at the School of Law and Social Justice. And today I'm here with Graciela Tonon, uh, and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the application of the capabilities approach to research on childhood. Hi, Graciela. Hi, Nico. Hello. How are you? First of all, thank you very much for this invitation. No, thanks uh, to you for, for being a part of this, and thanks for your introductory video to the capabilities approach. Uh, as I mentioned before, the idea to, uh, in this short video is to talk a bit about a couple of issues of how we can apply what you explained in the previous video uh, to the particular case of childhood. Um, in general terms, um, I think that there are two big issues that, that we could talk about. Um, first, related to the idea of, of the capabilities approach of thinking of individuals as agents of change and agents of freedom. Uh, it's important to think and reflect about uh, how this translates into, into children being seen as objects of research to being subjects of research. And the second point that is um, um, very important for the capabilities approach, as is an approach focused on freedom, is to think about how, I mean, childhood has always been a, um, a topic and, and, a, and a population that we think in terms of protection and um, being the fact that the capabilities approach is so focused on freedom, I would think important and interesting to discuss how can we make use of this approach to reflect on, on the freedom side of childhood and on the freedoms that children should have. Um, in, okay. Yeah, and in relation to the first point, so you, you mentioned the need for a shift from, from 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 more object-based to subject-based approaches when doing research, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. uh, the capabilities approach sees individuals as agents of change and agents of freedom, and the and we I think that the capabilities approach does have a potential of changing this. Children as a group have been systematically has so systematically suffered from a tendency to being treated as objects rather than subjects, and I wonder wonder whether you could expand on how you think we can make use of the capabilities mm -hmm. approach as a framework to improve subject-based research uh, with children and about children and how you have done this in your own work. Okay. Okay. Well, let's first of all talk about the use of the capability approach with working with children where we need to remember first the new conception of childhood, yes, that has favored a new form of research that make us use of methodological outlooks that consist in questioning children directly about their lives. No, the traditional way for to ask adults about children, this is called adult centrings, but now we are changing. Well, but the new theoretical proposal not only has um, an individual focus on person's lives from a so-called objective point of view, perhaps it's the, the point of view that my professors at the university last century <laughs> learned me to do yet, you know? <laughs> but, but based on now, in, on me, this, this traditional point of view was based on measurements made through the quantitative methods, but also acknowledge today that the fact that quality of life is affected by the social structure, Considered in terms of demographic characteristics, cultural traits, the community psychosocial features, as well as those of the institutions. So, based on the above mentioned, it is essential to go beyond the idea that children are the objects and begin to consider the protagonist. According to Sen, they are conceived as activations of change rather than passive recipients of benefices, yes? Uh, it is likewise important to bear in mind that in the last years, a movement has begun to expand and bring visibility to the consideration of boys and girls as subjects. That's giving value to the possibility of expressing themselves verbally so that they can be better understood. Um, this has not only generated a change in the development and application of research studies through quantitative methods, 
uh, but has further given rise to the development of the studies developed by qualitative methods. And if we look through the history, we will see that already in the 19th, for instance, Garbarino has urged childhood researchers to overcome the traditional difficulties that would lead up to consider the lack of reliability regarding the information provided by boys and girls, recognizing that the social representation that adults have about childhood and the child population make up fundamental elements of the psychosocial background of the quality of life of boys and girls, but they are probably not the ones that boys and girls have about their own situation. No? This man told us about this 40, four, four decades ago, but today the problem is not <laughs> resolved yet. <yeah? laughs> but well, he's an expert in, in indicators and, and he said that an indicator should measure the inequalities of a child who lives without having their needs met and is at risk. But this is what's conventional poverty measures, for instance. But that measure of economic deprivation should be augmented with a measure of, for instance, well-being, abundance, the degree to which the child's family has enough income to allow access to resources. So researching with children is, is imperative to overcome the adult's stereotype outlooks and rooted belief which set up barriers and do not allow different ways of focusing on different situations, often unexpected, which might be assessed positively or negatively by boys and girls themselves. Since becoming acquainted with the real situation of childhood from their own perspective will allow a better understanding of the type of society we live in, as well as the particular way in which each society assesses life experience in childhood. This particular way of conducting research studies on the quality of life of boys and girls, taking into consideration both an objective and subjective outlook on its dimensions, leads straight not only to analyze the quantification of the general aspects of their lives, but also the development of research studies through mixed methods, for instance, integrating quantitative and qualitative. So as to prove more deeply into those situations through the eyes of the actual protagonists, boys and girls, thus allowing the creation of public policies that may provide a suitable response to the above mentioned problem. Another important point for me, if you allow me to speak about it, Nico, is the need to review our role as researchers working with children. Because our option of study focuses on children as subjects. And now um, we need to remember that the subject is an actor, is a protagonist, and a builder of reality. Hmm? Mm, along this line, it is important to consider that research problems, to the extent they are acknowledged, the knowledge problems, are entities that we have built ourselves and are not out there in reality in a concrete way for us to touch. But they incarnate themselves in subjects. And it is with them with whom we need to relate in order to be able to understand them. This system of discovery and reconstruction of knowledge is an interactive social action between the subjects that participate in the process. This is to say, the researchers and the research subjects that in this case are boys and girls, which modifies us and modify the process we develop. Hmm? It is advisable for those researchers interested in doing research, particularly with children, to conduct a self-observation on the potentialities and limitation he or she has in order to address the reality of childhood. In that self-observation, it will be vital for researchers to identify all his or her biases about his or her own childhood and the childhood of others. Without this internal, intellectual, and deeply sensitive work, the future implementation of the qualitative research techniques in real life might be undermined by dangerous blinders that could give rise 
to minimalist appreciation of childhood and result in a cruel underestimation of children's opinions of viewpoints. But only to finish this, this is not only a change of words, we need to change our procedures in daily life, yes? Yeah, I, th I think that that's a very good point. And um, we, we tend to, to think in a sense, I mean, there is a transition, as you mentioned, towards more participatory, participatory methods. But in many instances, as you have hinted, it can be tokenistic, right? In the sense that mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I, I talk to a couple of children and this is enough to justify that I'm talking about the whole of childhood. And, and, and that's very problematic because, I mean, it, it, it ends up um, perpetuating uh, a system that actually doesn't take children as, I mean, as the capabilities approach would say, as each individual as an end in themselves, right? Rather, one child as the representative of all children. I mean, in, in, my, in my particular field, I'm a philosopher. Uh, usually what, philo what happens with philosophers is that they see their child, they see their own child, and they abstract the whole of childhood based on the experience of, of a very small group of potentially very privileged children. And that can lead to very problematic outcomes on their reflections. And I think that you, 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 you might agree, uh, especially looking at it from, from the perspective of, of Latin America. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what, what, your, what, your, what your impression is as a Latin American scholar working in a field that is mostly European dominated. Uh, mm -hmm. well, uh, <laughs> what, is your, what is your impression of, of this in terms of, of the research that is done? Okay, well, first of all, uh, you say that you are a philosopher. I am a social worker, first of all. I have a degree, a master's degree and a PhD degree in political sciences. But first of all, I am a social worker. And I spent 25 years of my life working with children at risk in conditions of vulnerability and maltreatment at streets. So, uh, and in the, uh, in the family. Um, so this is the reason I say it's not only to change words, it's to change our minds. Really, to, to make a deep comprehension on, of what happened with the child is not easy. Every time I interview a boy or a girl, they always surprise myself, telling me things that I can't imagine before. It is very difficult for someone that never worked with children in daily life to try to understand this. Really, it's difficult. Um, in the case of Latin America, perhaps for us, the important thing to say is that the word participation doesn't have the same meaning that in the European um, geography, yes? Because participation for us the real participation is to take the decision together, not only to speak together. And this is very, very difficult, particularly in the um, professional activity with children. No, in the case, in my case, that I I I work so so many years as social worker. In the case of researchers, um, well, our role is not to take the decisions, to make the decision. We try to analyze what is happening and perhaps try to, to, give, some, to give some recommendation, for instance. But it is important that, um, first of all, we know our history and we remember the history and try first to analyze what happened with us when we were children. Even the, the society was very different two or three or 40 uh, decades ago, no, no matter about it. Because if I can't understand myself first, it will be very difficult to understand another person, and particularly if the person is a child, yes. This is the reason, but it's a position in life, Nico, not only in theory, only in methodology. Yes, it's what we are. Yes, and what is our form or what is 
the our the decision we take we when we um establish a relation with other people real for me really for me the other people is a subject and not only an object of my analysis mm -hmm. this is a first decision and this is the thing i really uh, try to to work every day with the young researchers not only to study all the theory and to be very clever using the methodology Course. trying to know what who they are and how to establish this fair relation with the person we will go on uh, in our research yeah thanks i i think I, i agree completely and i think this this links well to the second general point that that mm -hmm. that i wanted to raise with you is um i mean the capabilities approach has an, an important concern with freedom and mm -hmm. it seems that the, the methods and the mechanism and the, the way of thinking that you're pr promoting uh, and encouraging goes very much in this line. In, uh, we need to think beyond s seeing them as objects, which means seeing them as protected beings and rather giving them the space and, and, and um, the arenas to actually explore themselves and explore their freedom and say what they want to say and make decisions together. And what I was wondering is, I mean, one of the critiques that has been raised to the capabilities approach in relation to children precisely goes in this line, right? That um, capabilities mm -hmm. approach to talks so much about freedom and talks about every individual being an agent of change. But there are many, even within the capabilities approach, um, who consider that, well, this may apply very well for adults, but children are not full rational uh, agents. Thus, we cannot allow them to be, um, um, we, we, we cannot use the same guiding principles for children and for adults precisely because of their, let's call it inherent differences, their, their assumed differences. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it would be interesting to talk about the benefits and flaws mm -hmm. of this very protective type of, of thinking. And, and reflecting on how and up to what point can we actually see children as agents themselves and an agents of freedom. Personally, myself, I do believe this to be the case, um, but I'm wondering, um, based on your own empirical analysis and your, and your, uh, and your, mm -hmm. and your work with children researchers, uh, how, do you, how do you see this relationship between children as agents of freedom and children in need of protection? Okay, well, um... Let's speak about children's and capabilities. Um, first of all, I, I I want to tell you that I am always trying to to look and to discover some lines in the in the, all the the books of of Sen when he he spoke about children. Yes, I have the the phrases <laughs> highlighted. Yes. Um, well, perhaps uh, some of the pioneer authors in the fields of capabilities think about the importance of enjoy children's functionings, yes? This is to say what children need to have related with the satisfaction of their basic needs protecting, no? For example, Anderson states that the relevant standard of justice is measured in terms of functionings rather than capabilities for children lack the autonomy to choose for themselves and therefore depend on adults to be able to do so. Well, I, I understand the previous point, but as you, I think that promoting freedoms in childhood is necessary. Although there are authors who consider that due to their lack of development, priority should be to ensure what is necessary so that they can have freedom in the future, not in the present, no? For example, uh, Dr. Sen, uh, although he expressed the need for countries to invest in childhood, also expressed that capabilities in adults are rooted in their childhood experiences. So I think it is important to work on children's capabilities. I also understand that the freedom that one has in childhood are not the same as in adulthood. However, children have a lot to say and no one is better qualified than themselves to describe themselves and their experiences and their needs. 
That's why it is important to educate children in the approach of freedom in relation to rights and work with them the use of freedoms in possible cases and impossible measures. I say this based on my professional experience as social worker. Um, when working with just, for, for example, on the decisions to be made about the future of the children, I always listened and respected the words of boys and girls. So I decided not to say, wait, I know that you need something. No, the situation is, ask the children, what do you think you need? Yes, try to, first try to listen and then try to make the decision together if it is possible. It is obvious that the children of six years old, for instance, can decide. <laughs> But please listen to him or to her because they have important thing to tell us about their experiences, their feelings, their needs, their opinions. Yes? Children have a lot to say. And that no one is better qualified to describe their realities. Children's protagonist role and the development of their freedom are not only referred to the autonomy or independence they may enjoy, but are also based on an active relationship they can have with the world around them. Yes. So if we only consider that children will have capabilities in the future, In some sense, we are related with the old definition of childhood. When I was young, I, I, I read the books that say, well, children today can take decisions, but in the future will be the adults of the future. Yes, but I always think about, but in the present. Why no of the authors I read spoke about what happened? with children at present, yes? They are human beings. Well, it, I, I understand that it's difficult for people because again, to understand this situation of children at present lead us to remember our own childhood. Mm -hmm. But it's my point of view, Nico. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think that that's a, <laughs> it's a very valuable point of view. <laughs> And I agree completely with you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, you mentioned that, that, um, that, I mean, I, I wanted to ask you before we close a bit about how you think about the relation between children and social justice, in particular in relation to vulnerability. Uh, okay. as, as you see it from the capabilities approach, you have so much work on this topic that I think it would be... Okay. Very valuable for everyone to hear your input on this. Okay, uh, okay, um, I, I'm be, because I my last book is about this social justice for children in the South, and you have a chapter in the book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, only a little, a little experience. The concept of, of children, social justice, and social vulnerabilities show show us that the capability approach turns out to be a theoretical proposal that enables a richer study and analysis of the topic, as well as the creation of public policies in this respect. Considering that the 21st century has witnesses innovative public policy proposals based on human rights, which allow the possibility of a permanent interaction and adjustment in accordance with the situation and context in which the individuals live. In this respect, what is needed is the consolidation of universal social protection systems, which are sensitive to children's rights and warranty child allowance. At this point, we must consider the concept of social protection system, which SEN defines as a stable social protection framework, the state's fundamental institutional mechanism as well as the citizens' extraordinary support in emergency situations, yes? Let me, for instance, speak about Latin America, yes? In the case of Latin America, for example, 
um, UNICEF reported that, that since the beginning of this century, the countries in the region have increased their social investment resources. And though prosile climate to economic performance, the increase in investment in social policies seems to have come to a stop now and even experience a recession in some countries. What is horrible, this? Nevertheless, in several countries, those programs not always have stable financial sources, thus generating a sense of uncertainty. Besides, there are a few cases of automatic adjustment of the length and amount of the transfer funds to ensure purchasing power over time in the light of the inflation process that are constantly afflicting the region. Children's social vulnerability can be disaggregated into economic and political. The social vulnerability of children is related to their personal situation and the conception of childhood of the society in which they live. Children are economically vulnerable because they cannot provide their own income, housing, transportation, and they are politically vulnerable because they cannot organize themselves in a way that generates political influence to change their lives. But also children can express their opinion regarding acts of government. I will tell you a little example on which being the research work that we developed during the first stage of the pandemic in 2020, in which we collected opinion of children about government decisions. On that occasion, the answer was that the governments in general should help those who get sick, help those who have lost their jobs, help the elderly who are the most vulnerable. Children say that the elderly are the most vulnerable. You can imagine in the groups we work. And in the case of children, I would say in the case of themselves, allow them to go out to play and ride their bicycles as well as organize homework that may at the moment present difficulties for them. So children are very connected with the reality and have their own opinions about the public policies and the decision that the government took. It is therefore necessary to secure adequate levels of social investment, further reinforcement of child investment plans, in the present moment of crisis in the world. Furthermore, the promotion of human capabilities is one of the ways, for me, of reducing vulnerability. Yeah, thanks so much. I think that um, hearing your own personal experience as a researcher uh, in the Latin American context, uh, providing credible inputs to, to researchers all over, uh, mm -hmm. on how to put into practice the capabilities approach, the limitations of the capabilities approach, uh, and, and the particular value, as you mentioned, and I think I want to highlight it before we close, the idea of, of not only changing how we talk about children, but changing our minds, how we think of them and with them, uh, in order to really put them in the driver's seat of the research process and taking them seriously as agents and actors themselves. Um, and Graciela, I just want to thank you very much for, for being a part of this series. Um, it has been very fun to chat uh, with you. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Nico, thank you very much for this possibility. For me, it's a honor and a pleasure. But first of all, only to, to close the, the, the conversation, telling something for the young researchers, yes? Um, first of all, I am a social worker, and when I decided to begin my career as a researcher was when I began not to find the answers to the things that appear in my daily life working with children as a social worker. So I decided also to become a researcher. So it's very important for young researchers to study theory to study methodology, but please to be with the children, to ask the children, listen to the children, and please feel the feelings of the children. If we can do this, it will not be possible to really make researchers <laughs> that uh, um, research project that can inspire <laughs> the policymakers to make the decision. Yes. So please. 
um, try to, 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 to continue working with the children. Thank you, really, Nico. Thanks so much, Graciela. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>